What's up guys, Mr. Stark here, and I wanna talk about basic alarm home intrusion systems. So what we're looking at here, and what we're gonna be talking about in this course extensively, is the various components that we use in the intrusion detection system world for, for the basic stuff of the home or slight commercial. Uh, what you're looking at here on the wall is a demonstration of a variety of different parts and how we can set them off in the lab setting and it, then it consequently shows us how they work in the field. So what I'm gonna do now is at least open up the brains of the whole system, which is the control panel. What you're gonna notice about this interior wiring is everything is grouped in there very nicely. The wires are stripped and tied in with no extra slack. They actually are tied in very neatly there's room for the battery compartment because if we lose power, we wanna make sure that we are still able to monitor our intrusion system. And uh, that's what the backup battery is for. We've got a detailed uh, description of which items go where on the terminal strip up here. And you also get a, uh, a wiring diagram that comes from the factory that tells you what all these individual pieces and parts are. You'll be dealing with this in the lab and I'll certainly uh, have more discussions on this. But in either event, when you're doing your labs, make sure that your wires are all tucked in and tie wrapped and then we see what we need to see. It shouldn't be a mess in here by any means. As a matter of fact, if you look at one of the code articles for this particular wiring section, article 725.24, class two circuit installed in a neat and workmanlike manner. So that is no exception to low voltage wiring. What you'll notice in here, We've got some resistors. So the purpose of this video really is to talk about these resistors. These resistors are actually in the three unused zones that I'm not using in this system. And how this works, and many other systems work this way, is the panel looks for the certain value of a resistor. So let's just say 3,300 ohms. That's what we're using in this particular system. And you'll have a bunch of devices that might be wired in series or parallel Let's just take, for example, a variety of door contacts or window contacts by the use of a mag magnetic reed switch. And what happens is if the window is closed, the contacts that are contained within that sealed component are closed. And if it's closed, that means that path for current flow is there and it allows uh, the, the control panel to see the resistor at the end of the line. So you will be learning about end of the line resistors and they have to be at the last device in the loop. So if the panel doesn't see 3,300 ohms, it's pretty simple, it goes into alarm. There are different stages of programming that we can deal with, it with contained within the, you know, this control panel. We can have instantaneous alarms, we can have delayed alarms, all done within programming. That's something that we'll either have time for in lab or we'll just leave everything instantaneous. But let me go over some of these other devices. So once again, a window contact. These are low profile. You put them in one window and you put it on the other part that moves. And if the window gets open, the circuit becomes open and then you don't see the resistor and it goes into alarm. Same thing over here, if you take a look through here, these are little door contacts. I'll show you these more closer up video. They go into the door jam and the door itself. So if somebody opens the door, it goes into alarm. Uh, oftentimes we try to put the end of the line resistor in a place where we can't see it. That's what this is for. It's in a junction box or an accessible place to be able to get to that resistor in the future. Then we have PIR sensors. I'm gonna set this off just so you can see. I'm just gonna rotate this. Passive infrared, it works based upon heat and movement. So if I open this, I'm actually moving something in front of it. That goes off. You can see that I'm in alarm. It's telling me what zone that's in. Zone four. In my house, I would probably actually have something else tied into zone four. It would, in programming, it would probably be say zone four, let's just say living room. And at least then it tells me what zone four is. This way I know where the alarm is. So now we'll leave that in status mode. Then we have glass break sensors. So let's say somebody was able to, uh, they saw that there was a window contact in the window. 
They said, hey, you know what? If we don't move the window, it won't go into alarm. But maybe if we break the glass, we're not actually opening the window, we're going through the window. Well, this will actually work and detect the sound of breaking glass. And a lot of us have a, an app on our phone, if you look for it, and it says the sound of glazing, uh, breaking glass. And that will actually set that off. And uh, you'll see a red light go off when the glass breaks. So these are usually mounted inside of the same room where you might have a window contact. And, you know, just for fun, when we're doing this in lab, these are some basic components. And once again, uh, you know, we have a horn or a siren that we can wire to. What you just heard was a siren, but if you wanted to wire it to the horn or the speaker, it's much louder. So what are we going to be doing in this course? We're going to learn how the components work in their uh, physical state. We're going to learn how, what size wires are pulled to these devices. We're going to learn how to open up certain devices, how to mount these devices. And most importantly, understand that the resistor is a very important piece to the puzzle. I'll finish this video by saying every zone needs to see the resistor. So in this panel, I have eight zones. If I don't have the resistor in the panel on that zone, it will go into alarm because that's what this control panel is designed to detect. It's designed to see the absence or the presence of that value resistor that comes with the component. This, this particular panel is 3,300 ohms. So take a good look at this because I'm gonna be grading your labs when you wire your control panels. I want them to look at least equal to or better than this in order to get 100. And then <clears throat> when we're in the lab, let's get creative on how we make our components. So you can see here, if I set this off, all I'm doing is rolling this away and that's simulating opening the window. I would then have to close it and then go back up and put my user code back in here, sound off, and then arm it again. And you can see the same type of function is done with this uh, door contact. If I roll this away, it goes into alarm. All I'm doing is taking the magnet and rolling it away from the other magnet. So hopefully, uh, you know, this kind of helps you get an idea of what we're going to be doing in lab. And, you know, it's a fun little system to play around with. Uh, more importantly, you're learning the theory of why that resistor is so important and then how to wire things in series and parallel, which may actually be your first time dealing with those terms. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you at the next one.